Good afternoon, everybody. It is, uh, yes, it's the afternoon. All right. Would you take your Bibles, please, and turn to the book of 2 uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we'll read these few verses together from verse 3 to the end of 6. And let's all read together. That's 2 Corinthians 10, chapter 10, verses 3 to 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when their obedience is fulfilled. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, uh, for this, uh, this verse and the others we're going to look at today. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you that every word is important. Lord, help us as we look at these few words today. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to do that. Uh, to look at just a couple different words here in the in the in the Bible, we like doing that. I like that verse where the Lord said to the devil, "That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God." Every word, and as we saw this morning, that even a, a simple word "and" is important. That every one that He put in there is important. So we want to look at just a few things here. We'll get going here uh, in Second Corinthians chapter ten, verses three to five. We're not looking at the whole. Uh, context of the thing, but there's just one little part there we want to use as a springboard into this. Uh, right down in verse 5 it says, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Captivity, every thought. So that is something that should be upon the Christian's heart and mind that uh, our, our thoughts, uh, we should be um, Bringing them into those into that realm whereby it is uh, um, okayed by the Lord or pleasing to the Lord or or whatever. Abraham Lincoln said one time. I think it was Abraham Lincoln said, "Think twice and speak once." And that's not bad advice. That's pretty good advice. But we need to make sure that our thoughts are in line with the Lord. And if we find ourselves that are the imaginations of our heart or mind of the old nature are not in line with the things of God or the things of Scripture and such, we should be arresting those things and casting them down. I don't know about you, but I just I use those words right there, casting down imaginations. I don't want that. Get it out of my head. Casting it down. You know, bring, want to bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. So we want to look at that, at the thoughts and the things of the mind. And you'll notice as we look through these verses, you'll hear about the heart, to hear about the mind because that's where the battle is often isn't it in the mind and in the heart and that's where the devil wants to get into but that's where God dwells he wants that's for him and so what I want you to do is flip over in your Bible to Philippians chapter 4 and we'll look at a couple of verses here and we'll just go I'm going to look at a couple of words here we've probably done this before but um, the Lord brought a couple things to my attention the other day, so we'll uh, go over it again. But that's that's uh, that's okay. So in Philippians chapter four, we want to have a look at verses four, five, and six. I'll read those, and then we'll uh, have a look at a couple things in here. That's Philippians chapter four, verse four. Rejoice in the Lord always. Boy, you could stop right there, eh? I don't know about you, but I'm not rejoicing in the Lord all the time. Does anybody, they don't put your hand up. Does, any, does anybody rejoice all the time? Apostle Paul did. How come? How could he do that? He sure walked close with the Lord, didn't he? They're the key for us right there. But let's get on with this. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Here's our verse. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Be careful for nothing. Now, the Lord didn't mean like, like nothing, did he? Did he mean like no thing? Let no thing captivate your mind and your heart and such to cause a problem for you. No thing at all. Yeah, that's what he meant right there. Um, 
that word careful is one of the words we want to look at today. That word careful right there is actually, we would say, anxious today. Okay, that's what the idea of it is, is anxiety. You ever get anxiety? We all get anxiety to different uh, levels and such, but how, it, how we handle it is, uh, is the thing. Be careful for nothing. Um, anxieties. Over in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, you don't have to turn there, we read that casting down or casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Um, so we see your care, it means to be anxious, to have a distracting care. So we can read in Philippians, uh, be careful for nothing, it means that anxiety and such. And we have in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, uh, it says your care, casting all your cares upon him. And not to be anxious, not having a distracting care. And you know, it, it works. I try this sometime. Uh, I read that the other day and I thought, hey, yeah, that, that's pretty good stuff, Lord. I've read it I don't know how many times, but uh, I like that. And the problem will come up and say, Lord, I have this care. I, I, I can't handle it. I'd be glad to give that to you. And then you have peace in your heart. But doesn't he say that? Doesn't he say that right there? Isn't that where he says that? careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known unto God verse 7 and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus anxieties we're going to look at is a, a terrible and tremendously uh, destructive thing in the, <clears throat> in the life of a Christian and something that gets in our, our minds so we see the word careful as it's used here is the same idea or actually the same word as anxious to be anxious, to have a distracting care, what would we be distracted from? Our walk with the Lord, keeping our minds pure or our minds focused upon Him, first and foremost, eh? Anything else can do that gets us off the mark, so to speak. We could be distracted. Anxiousness, care, it causes us to be distracted from the Lord Jesus. Be distracted from the Spirit of God leading us and speaking to us. All, all, all that, that we find there. Over in Proverbs chapter 12, uh, verse 25. You don't have to turn there if you don't want, but uh, I'll just read it to you. In Proverbs 12, we have this. Now, this is the Old Testament, of course. Uh, of course it is, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. It says this, heaviness in the heart of man makes it stoop, but a good word makes it glad. Let's look at that first, first half bit. Oh, two words. Heaviness in the heart of man makes it stoop. Do you know what that word heaviness there in the Hebrew is? Anxiety. Anxiousness. Anxiousness. We all have that and have experienced that. We know what it is. We don't even have to explain it to, to each other what anxiousness is. It's that distracting care. It's anxious. You've got this anxiety. But look at what he says. So we can say there that heaviness or anxiety, where, where is it found? Right in your heart. Okay? Whoa. That's not supposed to be there. Heaviness in the heart. Anxiety in the heart of man makes it stoop. You know what the Hebrew word for stoop is right there? It means to sink down, to be depressed. Really? Yeah, to be depressed. Has anybody ever been depressed? Don't put your hand up if you ever find yourself in a state like that. We know what it is. We don't have to explain that. Everybody has a good understanding of what that can be. You can have a bad day. You can have a bad week. You can have a bad month. Some people have a bad life. They're caught in this depression. Hey, that's what the Bible says. It's a depression. That's where it comes from. Depression comes right from there. Anxiousness in the heart of man causes depression. Oh, it's not our friend, it's our enemy. It hurts, it's harmful. We have to find out what caused this. It's a care, it's an anxiety about something or a person or whatever. Okay? We find that in our lives. Some people are, have these things all the time. It's a common thing, they kind of live there. Uh, if we look, I looked in Webster's Dictionary for the definition of anxiety. He says, it's a, a painful uneasiness of mind. 
And we got the heart and we mind. They're linked, aren't they? They're linked together. A painful uneasiness of mind over an impending or anticipated ill. You hear that? That's pretty good. That's a pretty good definition. A painful or uneasiness of mind. Your mind is uneasy. What's the opposite of uneasiness? Peace. Over an impending or uh, uh, anticipated. You got something or something that's coming down the road future and you're looking at it and you're thinking about it and it's getting weighing you down and it's heavy upon you. It's not uh, a good thing for us. It's a painful thing and it's in the mind. Okay? To be depressed. That's that depression. That's that care. That's that anxiousness. That's that anxiety whereby we read first of all that we're to bring every thought into the captivity of Christ. Bring every thought to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We're supposed to do that. Guard your own mind. Uh, be a watchman over your own mind. There's all kinds of things this day in this wicked, wicked world that get into our minds and hearts and such. But not even that. Just uh, uh, the things of the future. And, and do you ever do something dumb and you wish, I wish I never did, did that. I wish I never said that. I wish I never would ever fill it in. And the anxiety coming from that. How many people never get anxious? Is there any? Please come and tell me how you do it. We got it right here. We're going to have it. It's right here in the Bible. Isn't it? And it can be the simplest thing. And the Lord says, why don't you cast that care upon me? Hey, that's a good idea. Lord, I can't handle this. And, uh, you know, sometimes I do dumb things. Do you? No, you don't. Never. I say, Lord, take it. And he gives, okay, he'll work it out. He may not work it out the way I think it's going to work out, but he'll work it out. And I'm not going to be anxious over it. I don't want to be anymore. Just let it go. It's as simple as that. Cast it down. Get rid of it. But we can see, it's just in a little, little bit of a um, word study here, we see uh, to cast down every thought, uh, 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 every imagination that's you know, unfit and such. And bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Be careful for nothing. Now, remember that word is anxiousness. Don't be anxious over anything. No thing at all. Um, cast your care upon Him. All those cares that we have, cast it upon Him because He cares for us. And Hebrews, it, uh, or sorry, uh, Proverbs, it tells us that heaviness in the heart of man makes it stoop. Anxiety causes depression. If you leave that there, you're going to drive, it's going to drive you out of your mind. You know? So what do we do? Well, we have to go back to Philippians chapter 4. He tells us. We already read it, but we're going to read it again. He tells us uh, how to handle this stuff. How to handle the anxiety. How to handle the uh, heaviness. How to handle this depression. How to hang, ha handle any of this stuff. We're to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But, here's what you're supposed to do. Here's what we have to do. How many times have we read this? How many times have we talked about it? How many times do we need to? Probably a thousand times more. But in everything. So you see the two words there? One is, be careful for nothing. But in everything. Okay? And for everything. Everything. No let anxiety be there, but what you should do for everything by prayer and supplication. And the enemy of our souls doesn't want us to pray. You know, get a, our minds busy, get our minds off it, get our minds over to somewhere else to have a distracting care or whatever. But you need to pray, and you need to pray all the time. You need to pray in the morning, you need to pray at noon, you need to pray at night, you need to pray all the time in, be, in between every opportunity to pray about everything. I remember uh, Willie Mullen, a great Irish preacher, was over, I forget where he was, uh, I think it might have been uh, North America, it might have been the States or Canada, but uh, there was a train uh, uh, delayed and such, and he had to be a certain place to talk, I've probably told this before, he had to be at a certain place at a certain time, he's either he was supposed to go and preach, uh, he's not going to make it, he's in the lineup, and he just stops, and he's right, right there in, in front of the ticket booth and all that stuff, he says, Lord, you know all about this. 
I just leave it with you. I don't know how it turned out, but he just left it with me. Let your moderation be known unto, <coughs> excuse me, unto all men. The Lord's at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests. That's your prayers, your supplications, your request. You request and ask of God. Some people think they don't even have to pray. God knows everything that I need before I don't even have to ask. <clears throat> well, you're missing out on a lot. You're missing out. God will help you with everything. Let your requests be made known unto God and, verse 7, the peace of God. There's what we want in our minds. We don't want anxiety. We don't want this other stuff. We don't want depression. We don't want the cares of the world. We want the peace of God. God wants that for us, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now we know, as we went down through, looking at some things about anxiousness and such, you can see it's in the heart, it's in the mind, and here we see that that peace shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay. Let's go over to, no, we'll finish up this way. Go over to 1 Peter, if you would please, chapter 5. And we go to 1 Peter chapter 5, and we go down to verse 7. We've already mentioned it, but we're going to look at something that's in this verse for our conclusion here to wrap it up. Casting all your care upon him, that's 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Okay, now let's just look at those words for a minute. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. But I want you to notice the two different things that are being mentioned there. He says, your care and his care. You see that? Your care, he cares. You see that? There's two separate things there, and both of those words uh, 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 mean something different. Okay? Your care, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it, it doesn't matter, um, Starts with M. Okay, <laughs> they both start with M. But this one's spelled M E R I M N A. Okay, your care. It means to be anxious about something, to have a distracting care. We've already read that. We've already covered that, haven't we? But the second part of this, you've got your care. Your care is that anxiousness and distracting care. But let's look at his care. It's a different word. It's M E L E I. Are we going to put it on I don't know. But it means this. this is a, these are Greek words, and this is from the Greek dictionary. This is what that word means. It means the care of forethought and interest, signifying something or someone is an object of care. Did you get that? This, his care means it's the, the care of forethought and insight. God's forethought, God's insight signifying, showing that there's something or someone, some object of great care to him. That's you. That's me. That's a believer. You see that? Our cares are distracting our anxiety. His care shows his interest, shows that we are special to him, we are something to him, we are an object of care from him, through him. Just something to think about. That's all. Thank you for your attention, and let's just pray. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word. We know that every word is important. We thank you that you do care for us, Lord. Your forethought and interest, and that you look upon us as objects of care, Lord, that you want to watch over us and help us. And if we would look to you, if we would pray, and we would bring our supplications with thanksgiving and such, Lord, that the peace of God We'll keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is what we want, what we need, Lord. And we know we've gone over it before, Lord, but sometimes we forget that we need to practice these things, keep these things upon our minds, Lord. We just pray you'd help us. If there be any listening today that have themselves in depression, in anxieties, in deep, deep cares, Lord, that the answer is to cast it to you, give it to you, and if they don't know Christ, then they need to, or else they can't do that. Maybe they can. Maybe you'll answer their prayer that way, Lord, and draw them to yourself. I don't know, but 
we just uh, thank you that uh, for your word in that we can read it and study it and see these things, Lord, and that you care for us. We want to thank you, Lord. Help us when anxieties and cares come upon us. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Wouldn't that be great to live there? Huh? It's possible. It's possible. That's what he says. That's all. Thank you.